Kids 2. Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. The 5600 XT has been out for a few months now and we've seen some really good partner cards and a little bit of a day one BIOS update debacle that we covered in the past. Now, the one thing we haven't tested yet is Linux performance and we touched on it in our 5600 XT launch video with the Sapphire Pulse, but compatibility was basically non-existent. Some things worked, other things didn't, and to be honest, it's still not quite there yet which kind of explains why this video exists. Now, I was playing around with Ubuntu 20.04 beta on the test bench, and I didn't realize I had the 5600 XT on the test bench, and the 5600 XT was working absolutely flawlessly, so I decided that I would uh, finally get around to testing the 5600 XT in Linux, and I'm sorry that you guys had to wait so long, but yeah, I finally have something to show you in Linux, and yeah, let's take a little bit of a look at how it performs. Before we start, I just want to really stress that we used a beta version of Ubuntu since this is the only distro that I've tested recently that I've been able to, like, I don't have to tinker with it basically to get the 5600 XT to work. I wanted to share our findings because I thought that the Linux community might actually find this interesting. And I only tested this in the name of science and there's no other reason for it. There's nothing else. And we've done a, a, a lot of testing with this card in Windows already. And if you want to see how this card does in Windows, you can check that out in the top right hand corner right now. And as usual, we're using our GPU test system, which is running the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra with the i7-8700K at five gigahertz with 16 gigs of Team Group Dark Z at 3600 megahertz. Now, the, the difference here, and please keep this in mind that we tested this with the Gigabyte 5600 XT Gaming OC with the updated BIOS in Ubuntu 20.04 beta running the open source AMD drivers, as well as the Valve ACO compiler that is installed with Ubuntu now out of the box. And spoiler alert, the GPU performance in Ubuntu 20.04 beta is very impressive. And all the other GPUs that you're gonna see in this video were tested with 18.04.3 with kernel 5.3.12, we're gonna to need to retest every other GPU we've got in hand to bring all of those results up to par. But for now, we're just gonna share those old results with you because yeah, I didn't wanna spend another two days testing GPUs just for this, this happy accident of a video. And like I mentioned, we've included some other cards that we tested to give this card a little bit of context. Now, we don't include 1% highs or lows with these tests because it just introduces a whole lot of extra testing. And I feel, and a lot of other people feel, that getting an average frame rate gives you a fairly good indication of the expected performance. Now, we use these benchmarks for every single GPU benchmarking that we do on the channel. And the reason why we do this is so we can compare this GPU with other GPUs. And we like all of that testing to be repeatable and we like it to be standardized. We don't like gameplay testing because those results, they just can't be repeated. And yeah, there's just too many variables and ultimately, they're pretty unreliable and we want the only variable in every single video that we do with every single GPU, the only variable needs to be the GPU. So yeah, not a certain part of a certain map for a certain game that one plays. And I know some people don't like this, but to be honest, it's just how we do it and it's accurate and repeatable. So with all that said, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now we test everything with this game with the high preset. For the 1080p test with the 5600 XT, we get an average score of 90 frames per second. For the 1440p test, we saw the 5600 XT get an average score of 63 frames per second. For the 4K test, we saw the 5600 XT get an average score of 35 frames per second. Let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We used the 4K Optimized preset, the 1080p Extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. For the 1440p custom test, we saw the 5600 XT get an average score of 91 frames per second. For the 4K optimized test, we saw the 5600 XT get an average score of 43 frames per second. For the 1080p extreme test, we saw the 5600 XT get an average score of 27 frames per second. 
All right, let's move on to the last benchmark. We use Basemark GPU. Now, Basemark GPU is a benchmarking utility for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. That's available from the Basemark website. So if you want to test out how your GPU goes, you can get it from there. And Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance since the 3D engine it uses has been designed from the ground up with Vulkan and it really takes advantage of your GPU. So let's see how the 5600 XT did. And we performed all of these tests with the high preset. For the 1080p test, we saw the 5600 XT get an average score of 152 frames per second. For the 1440p test, we saw the 5600 XT get an average score of 115 frames per second. For the 4K test, we saw the 5600 XT get an average score of 68 frames per second. And just to clarify a few things as well, we didn't include thermal or acoustic testing for one simple reason. We've already covered this in another video that you can check out in the top right hand corner right now. And lastly, I wanted to do something that we've been doing in these Linux benchmarking videos lately. I wanted to share the Windows versus Linux comparison with, uh, yeah, with those three benchmarks. And there's three benchmarks that actually overlap, which is why we use those three benchmarks in the first place. So you can see an indication of the performance between Windows and Linux. And that being said, just be aware that this is a beta version of Ubuntu. So uh, don't get too excited because things could change and the other GPUs could perform better. But let's check those results out now. I hope you guys enjoyed this happy accident, seriously. I realized that the 5600 XT worked perfectly without doing anything. And I just wanted to share this because I was excited that it was working at all. And obviously with tinkering, you can get it to work. And uh, I, I'm not gonna debate that at all because Linux guys, you'll make stuff work. And I've had it working with Pop OS and Manjaro, but to be honest, I need to say this because I'm sure maybe the right person will see this, but I think AMD's dropped the ball with their proprietary Linux drivers. They've always been kind of bad with their Linux support and they used to be pretty good with it, but lately, I don't know what's going on. And I've been checking the driver page on the AMD website every single day and it's just come up with nothing. And I reckon there's a lot of other Linux users out there who are feeling the same way as me. And they're probably as disappointed as I'm feeling with the uh, lack of support from AMD right now. But I'm just happy to say that there are alternatives and that's the great thing about Linux. If you want it to get it to work, you can get it to work and you can do it your own way and no one is, no one can tell you what to do basically. All right, I think that's it. Am I done now, Claire? Yes. You want to go back to playing some Animal Crossing? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Consider hitting the join button to support the channel or you can get early access to all of our stuff on Floatplane. Yes, we're on Floatplane. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. And Claire, do you want to tell the ladies and gents out there what time it is that I decided that this video had to happen considering this was a complete accidental video. I wasn't even going to do a video today, but I just had to share this because I can't believe it's working now. You want to tell them what time it is? I can't tell the time. You can't tell the time? Well, it's 9.32 p.m. on Monday the 6th of April. So yeah. Thanks for watching.